Oh, hold on. Hey, 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 here I am. Hold on a second. I am live and I'm gonna get Kate with me. Yes. Uh, yeah. She is here. Life, yes, work. She will come. Yeah. Hello. Good day. Yoohoo. Hi, Kate. My first Instagram live. Hi. <laughs> That's a cool. I'm honored that it is with me. That's so yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for pushing me outside my limits. <laughs> You're so welcome. Um, and um, hi from Austria to Australia. This is awesome. Yes. Yes, from hometown in yes. WA. I just put it there. That's cool. Yes, can you hear cool. me? Uh, can you hear me, Yes, yes. yes great. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for, for um, coming, uh, for being here with me and doing this talk with me. And uh, we connected uh, because you are an unschooling or homeschooling mom and you're a traveler mom and you're an Australian mom. And uh, maybe you want to introduce you, uh, yourself um, for my audience um, a little bit what yes, you do. And, sure. and yeah, perfect. Okay, sure. Um, so my name's Kate Najer and I have been unschooling now for approximately about a year and last year in January I took off around Australia and um, pursuing a dream that I had had for a while and um, I just took off with my seven-year-old son and we started by doing distance education and found that really difficult to become a teacher and my son didn't respond too well to that either. And then I went to, I tried School of the Air, um, hoping that I would get more support from the teachers. And um, so this was the most difficult thing about our travels was trying to school my son and also to meet programs that the, um, the agencies had for us as well. And then in June last year, I actually flew back to my hometown so we could see the family. And the um, School of the Air had actually wanted to meet with me and just say to me that I needed to leave their organisation because I wasn't meeting the requirements for schooling. And I tried to explain that I just couldn't get my son to sit down for longer than 15 minutes at a time and it always caused a lot of frustration and anger and and um, and anyway, so I just went back to Queensland after that and I ended up registering him for homeschooling. And then we travelled for the other six months um, homeschooling and I never heard from the Queensland um, homeschooling department at all for that during that whole time. And then I um, ended up putting him into a state school because there was still three weeks left of school when I got back to my hometown before Christmas and I put him into the school here. And um, so he really, um, he he cried a lot and he said, Mum, I really don't want to do this anymore. Like, please, 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 can you homeschool? I'll do anything. Like, mm. And um and so I just really wanted to continue to homeschool and to travel as well. And so um, Christmas came and um, and then I decided I'm not going to put him back into the school. I'm not going to... I'm not going to put him into any school. And so getting, getting him out of the schooling system has been a little bit difficult, but um, so now I'm actually not registered with anybody and, um, and I just prefer that way because I, I don't want to have to report to anybody and 
Um, the homeschooling department in Western Australia, as I understand it, is quite difficult still. Like you have to follow curriculum um, and I'm not sure that unschooling is a thing here um, because I haven't met anyone and I haven't met um, people in like groups, homeschooling groups and stuff that say um, good things about um, having to um, report on their children and that kind of mm. thing in my home. Team. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. Oh, mm -hmm. Big story. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that yeah. sounds very courageous to do that. Mm. Yeah, I, I've um, followed my gut quite a lot and, um, yeah, and I just feel like that was the right thing that I needed to do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I totally feel you and maybe... I will introduce myself also for your audience. My name is Irene Kainz and I'm living in Austria. And I know what you talk about this gut feeling because I had the same thing. Um, there is in Austria also the, the unschooling is not, um, it is a thing, it became a thing meanwhile, but um, it's not legal. And um, since the past two years with the pandemic, there were so many people um, so many families coming from uh, a distant schooling towards a uh, homeschooling. And with that, they, a lot of them realized that the path f follows somewhere else towards unschooling. And this part is not um, legal in Austria and the, this government tries now to to make it a little bit more rigid and a little bit more uh, difficult and uh, stricter with that exam. We, uh, like uh, homeschoolers in Austria need to have an exam once a year um, to uh, on the curriculum. And uh, this is getting much more strict this year than it was the years before. So that's why I'm like um, really into this topic right now because I personally feel and we, we both met um, because our mutual men mentor um, and we are both into this thing of personal development and I'm definitely really having a, um, a view on life that is oriented on potential, on our human potential and our human potential is so so huge we we can't even imagine it i think and um i for myself and my life and did discovered if i really want to walk that path towards potential full potential then um i need to do i, I want and need to do this from early on with my child and um our common society tends to cut the potential off very early and condition uh, so many things in our behavior. So we, we, we lose our connection to our potential. And that's what we do as an adult then when we are in personal growth. We, we, we try to unlearn all these conditionings and reprogram all those conditionings. And that's actually... Uh, a term that is in the unschooling world quite common as de-schooling. And of course, it's not only school that pro programs up us, but school is a major part of our um, set society terms. So the schooling, the de-schooling is, is a very important thing for me as an adult to, to reconnect to who I am really in my depth. <clears throat> so how do you feel about this? Uh, do you have similar uh, oh, I'm ideas here. on that? I'm here. Yes, I, I definitely hear you. And um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure how it became so. And um, I, I, I like to um, go more outside of the systems of control. Uh, and and I'm not sure why I'm going this way. It's just um, I see it so much now. Like I see it with everything. Like a whole world is, you know, one big system of control. And I just, 
Um, so I've, I've, I'm trying to lead a life that's um, outside of all of that and, and going with my, my gut and, and, um, and finding my purpose more in that way and bringing up a very switched on son as well that, um, by the way, he's seven and, um, yeah, and I just, I do get so many comments now that we are going down this road and, um, about just how switched on he is and how smart he is and um, he's he's not only got, um, you know, like he, I, I still try and, and teach basic maths and English and writing and reading um, day, well, day to day, um, but I'm not strict on it. If it's not working, it's just not working. We, we'll go off, but it's the life skills and it's the social skills with communicating with adults and um, also like just learning things that, you know, in person and, and um, yeah, it's really, it really does make a difference and, um, yeah, they're much more aware of their surroundings than, you know, mm. a child that probably just goes to school every day. Mm. Mm. To our audience, we have a few people in here. If you have any questions, you, you're, um, you can write them in the comments and we will try to answer them. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching here. Um, yeah. Yeah, one, one major thing that comes up for me with school system is that um, that's the thing what I uh, earlier said about the potential, why we can't hold the connection to our potential in, in a school system is because we are not allowed to say no. Uh, you, you know, I mean, there is this duty. I don't know if this is the right word in English, but it's, you're obligated to go to school. You have this mm -hmm. obligation to go to school and there is no no allowed in that. Mm -hmm. And there is also no no allowed within, I mean, the major structure of your, of the daily life of a child for more than a decade. So if we are not allowed to say no, of course, um, we have to distort something within us because of course within a decade there are no's <laughs> and maybe there is even a no towards the entire system in general and uh, if we don't respect that those no's as a human being we have to um We're punished. Yeah, we have to, yeah we, or we, something has to has to break in within or we have to distort it or we have to hide it or we have to do pretend we, are, we would be someone different right or some Something like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Yeah. This is. Uh, I think. Um, I think if if it wasn't an obligation to go to school, I mean, first of all, I think that school had to be different for becoming the yeses from the kids, <laughs> to really, you know, and uh, also. I don't think that. Um, I, I do think that a lot of kids would want to go to school if they are really allowed to choose. Uh, but it would, have, yes. it would have to be in a different um, setting and different structured, much more, um, you know, con like... I, I guess mm -hmm. that a school system in Austria, what I, uh, in Australia, what I've heard is very different than in Austria, but um, it probably depends from school to school as well. But yeah, uh, it, it, it should have, I mean, it, it is, yeah. It is really very, how can I say that? Um, I mean, they, in school it is, it is uh, expected to take orders and fulfill orders. That's how I experience it. I had the yes, experience yes. as a pupil as myself, and I still see it happening. So yes, yeah, and yeah. there are a lot of people and, and children that you know um, whether they're programmed that way, but they do like having authority, uh, like people um, telling them what to do, so they 
you know, know what to do rather than following their, you know, their instinct. Um, but also, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I, I'm so I'm so grateful that I, I did give my son that choice of whether he wanted to go back to school or not because um, travelling around in a caravan was not going to work if he wanted to be at school and and I would have done the right thing by him by staying put and, and trying to base myself somewhere for him to do that routine type thing um, of going to school, being around his peers and friends that he met in primary school and, and grade one. But he didn't want – he did – he didn't want any of it and which really surprised me because I was like, okay, well, we're going to go home. You can go back to school. And it was a real push for me to get him in to school for the last three weeks of um, the year last year. And I, and he was doing swimming lessons and everything. It was, it was not like it was like just work, 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 but he, he didn't enjoy being away from me for that amount of time. And he also just, um, you know, uh, he he gets along with children, but he also gets very offended when he doesn't. And um, yeah, he just he still preferred to um, for me to homeschool him. And he was like, "Can we just go travelling again, please, Mum?" And yes, partly because it's it's fun, you know, like going travelling and and we try and have as much fun as we can. Uh, but also, like, the, the the terms were, but when I'm trying to teach you something, Malachi, can you, you know, like, you're going to have to learn in some way or another, like, can you please just, um, now that you've made this decision, can you make it easier for me? Because if you don't make it easier, then when, you know, it's not happy for us to to do this. Like, we actually have to get along and you have to, you know, like just try and make this work. And so now that I've got that consent from him and that understanding, um, it's made it it's made it easier, um, definitely easier. And the communication's a lot better with, when it comes to um, it comes to trying to teach him certain things. But, yeah, it's also, um, like you said to me earlier, um, it's programming myself or de-schooling myself to be able to um, not have to be, you know, have this strict routine and this strict um, program that, you know, I had once had. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, how do you feel about this uh, de-schooling yourself? What are your experiences with that? What is the major, what, what were your major um, thing with that? I or? guess at first I really felt, when I first went into the homeschooling in June, July last year, mm -hmm. I really felt like I wasn't doing the right thing by my son, that he, I was so worried that he would, not be a smart person, you know, um, because he, he wasn't sitting down to do any work. Mm. Um, but I couldn't push that and I tried to push it to the point where he would tear apart our caravan and lock me out of the caravan and like, he just refused to do anything. And so with him doing that, in the end, I was like, oh, well, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything today. Like, and we'd just go about our day and he'd learn things in other ways and he actually enjoys going to museums and stuff like that. And um, it was trying to bring it in in ways that he found fun. And um, But he was really the leading agent of me actually um, de-schooling myself and... Um, yeah, and doing book work, you know, like sitting down to do book work. He hates it. He will not do it. <laughs> and and I had to. So I really had to because I just um, – I wasn't coping with the other methods. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually really grateful that he pushed me to do that. And they really are our teachers as well. 
definitely. Our yes. children. Our Absolutely. Sisters. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's so interesting what you what you tell me because um, that's what I keep hearing, especially from boys. It's it's usually more boys in um, uh, who are not ready with the age of six or seven or eight or even I don't know even later to sit there all day long and do work with books. They aren't. My son wasn't either, and. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Peter Gray. He's a psychologist who um, researches uh, unschooling in the U.S. ever since the 70s, I guess, or at least the 80s. And um, are, you, are you still here? Yeah. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> and and he, he described that there is this certain type, if you want to say it like this, of of kids and they are usually boys and they're usually like very physical they need to like move a lot and they're like really into sports and really into um, this moving thing and they usually are not interested in um, my son wasn't an interested in anything with paper and pen nothing paper and pen or uh, he loves stories he loves listening to stories he's really really eloquent with his language but when, when it comes to written language <laughs> I mean he now starts he's now a teenager and he now realizes that on a, on a, on a meta level he realizes you know he, he can uh, reflect on that already he realizes that once he, one, when he wants to be part of of the society and since we are like a social race we want to um, be part of you know a group we want to be part um, uh, as human so he sees that if he really wants to be a, a full member of society he needs to read and write uh, and um, maths never was was a thing anyway like he, he said totally is into maths but reading and writing he always learned to uh, as much as it was needed but it was never his real interest and now he realizes okay it's part of that and now he, he decides from from still from himself from an internal impulse but through a reflection on the world and not through his passion that he wants to, or needs to re, to learn that and um, you know everything we decide for ourselves us from a from a deep um own motivation we can do very quickly and easily and we can keep that all through our life we can learn anything no matter how old we are um, sometimes we believe we couldn't because this is also a program i, I guess but um we, we do we can learn anything at any time that's what i believe yeah so it sounds like your son is, is so, some kind of um also this type of boy <laughs> he like is definitely very moving and very oh yeah very high energy mm. and um sometimes i've actually wondered whether he's on the spectrum of um adhd or but i've never i've never gone down that path of actually putting a label on him uh because i i don't I want to. I don't want to mask his his um, symptoms, his his energy. Um, I don't want to change who he is, and um, so I, the best thing I can do is work with him, and and um, and also just keep his nutrition. I've noticed since we've been on some like nutritional supplements that he um, his you know temperament and all that sort of stuff has um, leveled out quite a lot more so um, yeah yeah so that's a whole different avenue to talk about children isn't it the ADHD yes. and, and stuff yes. there's so many children with that kind of um, thing but 
yeah, I, I, boys, yeah, boys, it's it's so common that they yeah, have that all the energy and they just, you know, they have to be doing something all the time. Yeah. And I saw here you mm -hmm. with not wanting to label this thing because, I mean, I also have this particular point of view. We wouldn't, if we, if we created the, our, our life around the needs of children and every, every human being and not um, the life of children and human being oppressed into a system, we wouldn't have a label like ADHD. I mean, this is only no. because we, we have this, this rigid system and we want to put anyone through that and everyone. But um, if we would turn the point of view around, so we have all these individuals and how do we, how, how can we create a system that supports those individuals, then we, do, we wouldn't have any of those labels because the system would support that and not, oh, you don't fit, you, you need to have a label, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. But I'm interested in the nutritions. Do you have any, do you want to, what, what, what was the, the thing for you? What nutrition? Oh, I'm not even sure what it's called, actually. <laughs> it's in the cupboard. Uh, but my mum put me onto them because we, at the start of the, this year, we went down south um, to start our travels again. And I had so much trouble with my son um, screaming in caravan parks. Um, and it just, yeah, he was, um, it was, it was so bad this night that I was, I was about six hours away um, from my hometown. And I just said to my mum, I'm done. I've had enough. I'm I'm coming home tomorrow and I Malachi's going back in school. He's getting medicated. I can't do this anymore. And she had been researching this stuff and the 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 guy that designed it, he was He had a wife that had committed suicide from bipolar and the the children had similar, they had um, symptoms of having something as well. Uh, I'm not sure exactly if it was bipolar, but they were all medicated, these children. But he said it was to the point these, the, one of the, one of the children, he, um, he would, you know, they were kind of in danger because, like, he would just get knives and, yeah, all sorts of mm. um, stuff. I, I'm not very good at explaining, but uh, he went down all these different avenues. The medication wasn't working and he saw psychologists, like, high up and and um, and they just said, you have to up his dose, you have to do this. And it was all about medication and there was no – nothing else yeah nothing else and there was something that he tried himself and it was something that they gave to pigs for um for, for yeah for something and anyway he designed this um and he found after i think it was 12 months his son was completely off his medication and and had asked his dad where have I been and he was like 17 years old he didn't know where he was it was like he was in a different mm. world um mm. but then they started um studying this nutrition supplements in um the universities and things and they found that it wasn't just bipolar it was also depression and all these different um you know labels and people were yeah completely going off their medication and everything and and I found definitely since taking it my son has leveled out and I can actually communicate with him mm. without him you know wanting to um yeah like um aggressively like he would you know physically hit me and stuff like that um he'd tear apart the caravan um, lock me out of the caravan, but he has stopped all of it. 
I'm just, wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And whether it's the age as well, you know, wow. getting over that mm -hmm. stage of the testosterone, it mm -hmm. could be that as well. But mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of, of that and me also changing my ways as well to, yeah, to listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, relationship is such a huge thing, you know. I mean, you that's I what I hear you saying here is now that with our trained behavior behavior also like what we see how how we deal with children and like all these orders and no no space for no's yeah. and all those things punishments I mean, of, yeah punishments of course we yeah. sabotage actually a real deep trusting relationship even as mothers to our children right if we keep on yeah. doing that and um, I find it also every time I did that um, I realized this is not the this is not going to the direction I, I want it to be so I always changed you know where where can I be connected what 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 does it need it what does it need to really be connected to really establish the trust and so he really can trust me as mm -hmm. his mother and um, I discovered that, that I had to let go a lot of those um, behaviors reactions those yeah reactions behind it. yeah yeah so how how is how is um, because I've, I'm hearing that a lot. Oh, your son is not going to school, but how does he do with, with his socializing? How does he socialize? So I'm, I'm asking this uh, question to it's you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so he socializes in caravan parks. I try uh, some, sometimes. We, we, like to, we like to go places off grid, uh, but there's always people around and he socializes with adults more than he does with children <laughs> and he um when we were going from caravan park to caravan park he would um he would turn up and he'd set up a little shop and he's done all these drawings and and paintings and he wanted to meet everyone around him he tells it he gets out and he meets the neighbors and he tells them a bit of our story about what we're doing and and I ha I've got this shop. Would you like to come and have a look at my my drawings? And he sells the drawings for a gold coin. And um, so that's one. I never did any of this. He it was all his own ideas. And so um, yeah, he would just go up to fires at um, caravan parks. And before I actually get there myself, he's already told them all about us. And so <laughs> he's quite the entertainer and he can just stand up in front of everyone and, and um, yeah, mainly the, the elderly people that are travelling in their caravans and stuff, they, they just love him. They, they um, yeah, he becomes really good close friends with um, the adults and then he, he'll get his bike around and, and meet other kids, but he really does prefer to be around the adults and, um yeah, so that's mainly his um, socialism when we're on the road, and when we're when we're in my hometown, like we just arrived back here today for another two weeks before we head up north. Um, so he catches up with his cousins, and there's still one friend that he catches up with um, that he went to school with in grade one and, and primary school, and uh, pre pre primary, I mean. And he also, um, we go to the homeschooling groups as well and the homeschooling groups um, has about 20, 20 to 30 children and they meet every Wednesday and, and so while we're here we'll do that as well. And, um, yeah, so that's how he keeps social. Yes. Cool. And... Um, um you said earlier you you're you do teach him like very flowy yes. as i understood and are yes, you the only well, person who who is tutoring or teaching him or is there 
um, how, how do you do, how is, um, how is like so, the, the, the daily life? How can I imagine that, um, your, your life? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so most of the time I teach him, but I do prefer somebody else doing it. And uh, when I can, I will get a tutor. Um, for instance, he's got one in my hometown that uh, he he loves going to, and she's very Steiner uh, based teacher. So, meaning when he um, she asks him what he wants to learn, and they will go up and like on the internet and Google um, things about sea animals, for instance, and then make a book out of it and do drawings and the writing of you know, certain aspects about the sea animal. Um, so I do that when possible, but on a normal day, I will spend um, the morning just um, doing my kind of routine of journaling and, and um, fitness. And then he will, um, he will usually go on his phone actually until um i'm ready about nine o'clock and then we'll sit down for approximately about an hour and we'll do some reading and we'll go on to some programs online um he really loves the reading eggs uh, the reading eggs app and you can also get it on your computer um it's just a subscription that i pay but um uh, it makes the learning fun And so he does that. But also, um, so I gave him my old iPhone instead of buying him an iPad for traveling. And he um, he will take pictures and send them through to, like, my mum and um, and everyone when we're away, like my sisters, and, and just keep that constant connection with them. But he also... He, if he doesn't know something, he'll just press the button and ask the question on Google. And so he's always constantly learning through that as well. And I like to, you know, I, I don't like him to be reliant on his phone at all, at all times. You know, we, we like to go out on an adventure or, um, yeah, mostly adventures. We love adventures, going out and having fun. And, um yeah so i mean screen time i just try and, and limit that but it's really great for when i need a break as well and and he needs a break and he he just really likes to chill out and do that um you know for a couple of hours a day um so yeah so that's mainly what we do like we'll have a fire in the evenings when we can and he's just getting into playing music as well And um, uh, we, used, we last year traveled with a dog as well, and so he often played plays with our girl. And um, yeah, we love the water. We love the ocean, so we'll try and go to the beach as much as possible. And yeah, just really um, yeah, try and enjoy life. Oh my God! This sounds sounds like such a dream life you're you're creating and living <laughs> with with your son. This sounds so awesome. And I'm thinking yeah. that a lot of people are having this question now. How do you finance all that? Do you work, or how how does how does this work? No, so I was extremely lucky in uh, following. If like I had, I had two businesses in beauty and wellness, and uh, for three years I did that. And I I'm also a remedial massage and dry needling therapist, mm -hmm. but so I also was married and I had um, five children between my husband and I and I worked a long, long hours. I, um, I would work when I got home. I would feed all the kids and everything and I, I ran a really, really busy life and I guess the travel around Australia has been a dream of mine forever. And my marriage fell apart um, and then the COVID um, also helped my business fall apart too, which I'm really grateful for. And, um, yeah, so I actually um, in that time I was following a, a girlfriend that was 
um, she had invested with this company and she every week would share her, the results that the company was paying on an investment that she had made. And I had been searching for something like that because I had planned to travel Australia and I still ended up selling my business and um, I was just going to go around Australia with the money that I had got from the business when I sold it. But instead I put a small investment into this um, trading platform and so they do all the trading for you in the foreign exchange currency market. And um, and I was just seeing great returns every week and I ended up deciding to put um, a heap of money into it. And so it's just been paying me um, whilst I travel and live my life, I suppose, like for now for since January last year. So I've wow. just been incredibly blessed um, with that opportunity. And um, it was another gut feeling that I had um, just to go for it. And, yeah, I have absolutely no regrets. Um, wow. And I've got all my money back. Plus, you know, I've actually got like five times my money back from this thing, uh, from this platform, and, um, and it just continues to grow even more. So, yay, happy days. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, awesome. This sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. would be really simple and easy if we allow it to and if we open up to it, right? Is this your experience as well? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, our mentor, you know, she says life is limitless, you know, and yeah. it really is. So if you really want something, I mean, you can you can get anything that you desire and, and that's pretty much what happened. Like this was a vision that I had um, on my dream board, on my vision board, and I just sometimes have to pinch myself of, you know, all these things being true. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, anything's possible and I'm just really glad that that's coming to my life as well. Yeah, that yes. sounds awesome. And another question that came up uh, once you talked about um, your your family situation, because I I also talk a lot with uh, moms who really feel pulled into that path of unschooling their kids, but the fathers don't agree. So, um, are you? Do you want to okay. open up um, towards your situation? Well, how this is um, happening yeah. with your family? Okay. Um, yeah, I really don't mind um, answering that. Um, so, my ex-husband, he wasn't the father of of Malachi. We met Brad. His name was um, when Malachi was a year and a half old. So. Um, Malachi has not got a father. Um, I had his biological father was, um, I was with her a month and I fell pregnant. And then, uh, after being together, um, for three months all together, we decided to go our separate ways and he didn't want to have anything to do with Malachi and I, I mean I did try but I just I just took it as a blessing for you know being able to have a child and um and so yeah we did go our separate ways he chose I just sent him the birth papers but he chose not to sign them and and so it's really um in that case like I'm I'm just free freed up to mm. not have mm. to consent to anybody else or anything about his life and and sometimes I I um, wonder whether he'll you know come back and in, in and want to you know meet um you know his son but yeah I'll just deal with that when that happens and and for now yeah just um I, I try and be very open at, with Malachi about that as well and and mm. not holding secrets. Mm. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a bit of a different situation. Um, I like, I try and, he really clicks with men when we're around, when we meet people, he will really, um, yeah, he'll, he'll, you know, play fight with, with men and, and um, really connect with them. So I know that he craves a, 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 con a, a male in his life. Mm. Um, and I try and and do that by tutors. Like when I'm picking a tutor, I've tried to get the man tutor and, and yeah, yeah, it just didn't work out actually with that um, particular person. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll always try and, like, get him to hang out with his grandfather when we're in town and, and just try and get that energy um, around him. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, what 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 do you have um, in mind for your future? How do you imagine your future? How long are you going to be traveling, or do you even have a plan? Or um, yeah, we we have a very big plan, and I wish Malachi was here to tell you that because he loves ah. telling people. Okay. Yeah, I'd love um, to hear it. He's one of the. He's part of the greater plan and um, so what we are doing with this, uh, we just got this new caravan, we're travelling up north for the winter um, of Western Australia and maybe go to Northern Territory, maybe Bali. Um, we, um, but we plan in the future to come back at the end of the year, hopefully buy a house. And next year, I am envisioning um, I want to go to Spain. But what Malachi and I plan to do is um, buy a boat, a very big, a very big boat. And oh I think. All over. I'm yeah, really yeah. So I'm just, oh, I've got my vision board somewhere, but because we've got the new caravan, it's not actually up. But he tells everybody that we're buying a super yacht. And I think it might actually come true next year. And um, I think it's going to happen when we're in Spain. And it's just funny. I'm actually meeting some people that, like I met somebody about a month ago and he delivers boats and he sells boats for people. And um, and I'd met someone when I was travelling around Australia and this other person had just bought a super yacht so like I was like oh isn't this interesting because we've actually been manifesting this for quite some time now and so Malachi the first thing he says to people when oh my mum and I we're going to buy a super yacht and we're going to travel the world <laughs> so yeah so that's a very big dream of ours and yeah I think that's probably going to happen um, eventually maybe next year Oh, wow. This sounds yeah. amazing. Oh, and also Malachi has the idea as well that he's going to be a pilot and he's going to fly the helicopter from the boat when he goes up. Oh, my God. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I love that. Sounds crazy. But yeah. It'll be amazing as well <laughs> if it really does happen. Hmm. Um, yeah. Since I'm, I'm, I'm talking to so many uh, parents right now who, who like, are drawn to this path of um, not schooling their kids, but um, still have a lot of fears. So when you say um, you're unschooling your son, but he dreams of being a pilot, do you think that works? Well, I also have done a bit of um, investigation about that. Mm -hmm. There's, a, um, there's a, a flying school in Fremantle in Perth in Western Australia and they can learn to fly from I think it's either 15 or 16 
years of age and I spoke with a homeschooling mum who has her children now going all into university and um, I asked her what were the requirements did you have to prove their schooling um, for them to get into university and she said no no like some of them had to do um, what do you call the uh, like a pre-course Mm-hmm. Uh, like a, um, I can't even think of the name. Um, so, yeah, so what I'm actually thinking is he may just get into the flying school with um, without having been registered for school up until then. And, um, yeah, it's something when he goes into like high school years that like as a teenager that I will definitely have to look into a bit more. But I mean if he just has to do like a year twelve, um, then we'll just do the um like the the, the TAFE course or I think the online course of year twelve for him to be able to enter in and just um yeah, do what he needs to if he still wants to be that when he grows up. Yeah. 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 Like he also 12? wants to be a chef as well. Mm. Sorry? He wants yeah. to be a chef as well. Ah, nice. Pilot and chef. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pre, pre um, what did you just call it? Uh, you, you mentioned the term I'm not familiar with, lucky year 12. Did you say that? Yeah, yeah what, year what 12, um, prerequisite. I think it's prerequisite. Um, I don't know what that is either. It's the last year of high school. Ah, I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it's, it's possibly, I, I think it's like a six-month course or something like mm, that. Yeah. Um, but there might be some kind of um, like test, yeah. a, a, like a prerequisite test, yeah. saying showing that you can actually do these things yeah. required to get into the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, that's the same situation uh, around here as well. You, you basically um, can um, can do all those um, final exams in like external non-schooling non-schooled tests to go to university or to have any kind of um, um, papers that you I don't know I don't even know the terms for, for all those for all those things but I know yeah. there is always a path uh, to do some kind of education if um, if if required yeah if you want that exactly yeah yeah so cool kate we're almost to an hour now talking there is so many topics is there anything <laughs> you would like to um to to finish our call is there anything you would like to to bring up? Oh. Um. yeah not not really um Although, I mean, for people that are also in Western Australia that watch this, um, I know when I, I had just decided that I, I didn't want to register my son and, and I know some, some a family that they wanted to do the same but they they wanted to go into the unschooling way and they went down the road of uh, registering through the homeschooling department and then to to unschool. But the the homeschooling department wouldn't allow that in Western Australia. And so, I mean, if you are a homeschooling, um, unschooling mum and you're in this state, I w would really love to... Um, chat to you a little bit more and um, yeah and I just 
yeah, I'm really grateful for um, having this discussion. I said to you, I wasn't really sure I had much to say and it's really been um, quite eye-opening and I'm really grateful for um, having a chat today and um, getting out of my comfort zone here online. Um, so thank mm. you for you t um, to um, taking my invitation and uh, having this chat and I, yeah, it is so valuable you say and said and I think like I feel my mission is really raising awareness that there are other paths than school. I'm not saying everyone should leave school, but I'd like to raise the awareness that this is not uh, the only possibility we have. We have so many options of how we can uh, educate our kids and school is one of them. And uh, yeah. not a lot of people are from, like, like even think about this and this is what I'm what I feel this is my mission to to raise the awareness on that yeah yeah I guess yeah just finding that what's important to you and and even if it is hard and difficult like it, it I mean it has been a journey for sure but I have absolutely no regrets and I wouldn't change any of it now mm. um mm. you know being get getting to be with my son and and live the way that we do is um, the best thing that's ever happened in my life, you know. Mm. And and um, yeah, it's possible. It's, yes, you don't have to do the nine to five and be stuck in the system. Like it's yeah. possible. You can you can get out of it and de school yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and unlearn all of these things that we were learnt as we were growing yeah. up yeah yeah and this is so beautiful that you say that because i just uh, wrote a post the other day on uh, that this decision of um unschooling my son was the best in my entire life and uh, he's 12 already so we have we have gone a bit of that path already and um, it has brought us so much um depth in our relationship and liberation as a family and um yeah i just i just love it as well yeah 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 Kate, thank you thank you so much thank you for so your much time and your wisdom and your daring to show up here with me on this call <laughs> and also especially thank you. for the courage of um walking this path with your son Yes, yeah. yes, yes, amazing. All right, yeah. well, um, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Thank you, and take care. You too, bye. Yeah, see you, everyone. See you, bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.